you need is the dullest color red. You can see it's red right there. I'm just going to walk down the face, one end to the other. sides and bottom or are you gonna get your jeweler saw out and everything and get it right down the final shape and then try to bend it or are you gonna go somewhere in between I go somewhere in between so for the butt plate we're making you can see the picture of it on page three but this is what I'm gonna bend all right I'm not gonna put all that fancy finial up here at the top because if I get off by 1 16th one way or the other, the thing doesn't bend exactly square or something like that, I'm going to hate myself and say that for when it comes to uh, trying to finish it up. Right? So I get it roughly to shape so I don't have to remove everything, but it gives me wiggle room. If something gets off by a 16th of an inch, it's not a big deal. You go to final shape and you get things off by a 16th of an inch, you're going to hate yourself. So you're going to have to mind, you're going to have to make a change. So again, I said that uh, there's a difference between forming and stretching. So forming is just bending it, but stretching is, is changing the dimensions. So I'm going to show you, here's an annealed piece of, uh, of brass. You can stretch a butt plate. The reason I'm showing you this is you may decide that you found a butt plate that darn near close to what you want, a cast butt plate, but it's just a little bit too small. If you could only stretch it a quarter inch, it would ma match what you intend to do. So let's stretch this thing a quarter inch. So I'm not going to use the bad ball peen or uh, cross peen hammer. I'm going to use the good one. I have a thing with uh, illusion stuff. So I'm going to use this one with a nice round radius on it. Got my cheap little 1884 anvil here, and we are going to strike it with the peen all the way down like this. Right? What we're going to do is in the bottom of that trough, the metal is going to be thinner than what it was before. The metal's got to go somewhere, so it lengthens it. It actually pushes the metal in one direction or the other. When I go to the other side and flatten it out, now it's going to be thinner and longer than it was before. 
So we'll see how much progress we can make. on there both on the inside and the outside right here's the important lesson what am I going to do now I'm going to kneel it okay I just got done working it now I'm going to kneel it if I decide I'm going to save some freaking time right I'm going to hit it with the face and smooth it all out I'm going to do stress cracks I stress this metal a lot right here so it needs to conductor of heat. So it's uh, if you've ever done blacksmith work and you know how far away you need to be from the hot edge, you need to be much further away with the brass. Alright, so now on the same surface that's ridged, I'm going to flatten it up. longer <laughs> okay so what, what do you say close the quarter inch yeah so we got an extra quarter inch and this is just one sixteenth material so you can get close to 10 percent without too much work and increase in dimension now we'll, we'll do a little bit and show you what happens with the round hammer the ball peen hammer when you work something like this. Now this is going to stretch it in all directions because it's round so the force radiates outward so you're going to see you're going to get a start to get an increase in width as well right so if you're using a round hammer you'll, you'll increase both dimensions at the same time it'll get a little bit longer and it will also get a little bit wider it's always going to get just a little bit wider when you're using a cross beam you're not going to be perfect with it but um it's mostly going to increase it lengthwise okay so, we talked about measurement and design work. For anybody that arrived a little bit later, I'll explain again. We'll look at page three. This is the butt plate we're working on. It's JP Peck, the uh, JP Beck Fowler that has straight rifling in it. I say it's a Fowler in the sense that it has a Fowler trigger guard. And it's an octagon round barrel. One of the reasons to choose this one is, uh, for demonstration purposes, is the, the heel is very simple. Okay, it's just kind of a right angle, and it's not got a lot of cupping. Right? So that'll make it easier. Right? So it's a good candidate. Second reason is, you can see that the top of it begins just like an English bowler. Right? This is your standard English fowler or musket uh, tang, right? Forward extension. And it's just like it up to this point. But this one's got that big heel, or actually this one's the, uh, sorry, same, same heel here. These are all pretty similar. They always taper toward the front. If 
I wanted to make this particular gun, I could not make it from an existing casting because it's got that three-fingered flame coming out the front of this butt plate right here that is as wide as the rest of it. So that's why uh, this would be a good candidate, if you will, for making uh, your own butt plate. So what I did, and I'll explain in my forms once more, is I choose hardwood um, that is not good for much else. So these are old planks that were used for um, ramps, basically. Uh, hickory ramps, if you will, for pulling wagons up onto, <laughs> onto a ledge on a barn. And uh, not high quality wood, couldn't use it for anything else, but it's hard as nails. And then I inlet the form that I want to use uh, into it as though it was a butt stuff. Right? That's so I can use this whole thing as a punch, as a former. So you've heard of like a punch and uh, like a punch and a die or male and female die. Then I go ahead and make the uh, the other side, female side, if you will, by basically inletting this into another piece of wood. So I'll rough gouge it out, and then I'll actually put inletting black on it, wrap it a few times, see where it's high, where it's low, get the whole thing leveled out, and I will leave some windage. Okay, all the way around it, so that I can get some sheet metal in there. Right? You can't make it a tight fit, otherwise there's going to be nowhere for the sheet metal to fit. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be that the, that this particular form is exactly like the butt plate that I want to make. It's just that it has to have the same heel shape. I can make it without the big dome here if I want to by just, and that's what I'm going to do with this back, back butt plate. So I don't have one yet. I don't have a form for it. But this is much closer a form than is my other one, which is the Hudson Valley, which has a huge hump at the back. See? Right there. So this is close enough for my purposes. It'll work. Now comes the uh, Moments of truth, right? Is it going to work? So I'll show you the principle that I use on these, and that is that I don't have a helper um, to hold everything down for me, and I'm capable of getting all kinds of awkward. So I minimize all my chances for error as much as possible. And that includes the die and a little hold down plan. And we'll get to the hold down plan when we get to that stage to build. Never mind the non-period fastening device here. Pay no attention to the man behind the mirror. Okay, so this has been made so that it's a pretty darn good fit for the, the rough cutout that I had here. <coughs> That's the rough cutout. And this has got pretty much the same shape, it's pretty shallow. It's got a pretty much of a 90 degree right there. I got a little arc at the top, all right? I got a radius at the, at the corner in the back here. So hopefully this should work, all right? So to help myself, I will trace the piece that I'm working on. I'll get a sharpie and I'll put it on there, what I'm working with so I know where the bend is gonna be. So I got the bend outlined right there, all right? So I'm going to do the whole thing this side up so I can look at it. And here we go. So there's my form. Here's my blank. And you can see it will fit in there. Okay. I've already started it down here. So I've got it so there's enough room for it to fit in on the sides. Now we just got to get after it. 
So I'm going to rough it in with my favorite ball peen hammer to get it started. And then I'm going to finish it up with the form. At this point, I'm freehanding it, just getting it started to sit down inside. I'll bring it up for you to look at it in a second. So now I've got the rounded part that goes against your shoulder. Okay, that's already formed. Slight radius right there, right? And I'm starting to bring it down into that corner. Now at this point, things could get wonky on you. So I've made this little hold fast, if you will, that will hold it down there. And I've, I've gouged it out so that I can swing the hammer. All right. And so we will put this thing in place and then hold it down. So where's my little hold fast? Right here. That lines up with one of our holes. Tell you what, I'll put this thing on and then we'll put the wedge in. That'll work. And there's also probably a left and a right to this thing. So. I don't have to screw it in as far as I did before, because really the way I've got the tension on this, it's not going to pull out. Okay. This one started. Now, today I'm not going to get this thing all the way to final, but you'll see that the steps are there basically for you to, to finish all the little uh, details on, on it to get it exactly how you want it. All right. Now, I have not worked the corner yet of the bend. That's why I'm not annealing it. Okay, I'm not annealing it yet because right now I'm going to work on an area that I haven't worked yet. But any area that I've worked with a hammer, with a hard hammer, uh, I am definitely going to uh, do some annealing for it. Well, it has been annealed, but I have to anneal the darn thing repeatedly through the whole process. Because you're working on it. Yeah, every time I work on it, I work on work hard. Let me give it a couple more whacks down into the corner, and then we will uh, we'll go from there. Now here, you got to make constant adjustments just like you would with anything else as you go along. This side is lower than that side. I've got to bring the thing over just a little bit. Okay. Straighten it out a little bit before I go too much further. Pay a special attention to that, that I get it right. As you can see, these are the kind of things you've got to deal with in progress as you're going. If you're hitting, it's going to want to go this way and that way. It's exacerbated if you don't have a form. Uh, makes it that much harder. Okay. So, actually, I, I'm not ready for that. That baby yet. So, let's try to straighten it up. And. Straightening. Wonky it up a little bit. Like I said, I do these things because for me, nothing is foolproof. 
And that's why the forms are helping me. But it's still going to require some skill. And some practice. time to uh, do the uh, demo at home. So the die may need a little adjustment. I may have to make small adjustments in, in how I cut the, cut the metal. But uh, once I get one set up that works well for me, I will usually go ahead and make two or three uh, plates while I'm all set up and feeling like I'm in the groove. So, I would advise, like, don't think I'll go buy one piece of, of two by 10 inch brass, right? And I'll make my butt plate, and then that, that will be that, okay? So, you can go to the effort of, uh, of making a die and doing everything else. You may as well uh, go ahead, allow for some mistakes. Spend 40 bucks on brass, and chances are you'll come out with at least two good butt plates. This is only, uh, this brass is only 50 thousandths, and I'm using 50 because I got a huge amount of it for next to nothing. And all I really want to do here is this demo. Um, I would use 50 for like Carolina guns or composite fowlers that have uh, very thin sheet butt plates that are just round to protect the heel. I uh, use it for stuff like that. I wouldn't use it for uh, anything that that looks like on the edge view like it's reasonably thick. It's a really thin butt plate on it. So, all right. I'm going to go directly to trying to use the uh, punch at this point. So I have a, a simpler punch for this one. Instead of using one of those punches that have a butt plate on it, so I don't already have a butt plate, I simply made a punch that fits into the die. And we'll see if this gives me any progress. So could one of you fellows give me a hand? So, I just want you to hold the block here. There you go. Yeah. And I will start to persuade it a little bit. Back 
back of it and up to the corner. Pretty well, pretty well formed. It's got a nice little smooth uh, radius to the part that goes up against your shoulder, that sort of thing. So now we got to figure out what are we going to do to fix up this corner and fix all this wonkiness up here. So this is where the uh, that's where these can come in handy. All right, so that one has got the best setup. Got only two. So I don't think there's a third wooden point. But on this one, I've got things set up so that if I was making one with a big heel here, I could take my clamp. I can clamp this into place and it would hold it here for me. And then I can work on the top. It's very easy. All right? Square everything up. So I'm not going to get the opportunity to do that right here. So I'm going to have to improvise a little bit. I wanted to use this one. I thought I had prepped this die for me, but apparently I had. I've got a variety of wooden uh, forms that all have different radii in them and that sort of thing. So now we're going to attempt to get this thing squared up a little bit on the top. All right. So again, I'm, I'm kind of using this anvil here as a uh, steadying spot. I'll ask my partner to come over here again. He's, he's trusting me so much with this thing. <laughs> and I don't have it to hold in the place for myself, but I can... You can hold that also, then we're we'll really being the money. Alright, and then square it up. There you go. Yeah. Just, just set it on here. Center it up. Okay. Right on there. Got it to the wide end back here. Alright, there we go. No hand right there. Alright. Alright, now go ahead and angle it, and I'll work that angle a little bit. And come back to the other side. Come back, come back to the other side. Good to see you. A little bit more. All right. Center it up. Okay. So now we've got. A butt plate that just needs a little bit of, a little bit of coaxing, pretty much, to get it into its final shape. All right. So I'm gonna have to clean up these little dimples on the corner. Looks like I bent it too far back, uh, so it's not as tall as I want it to be against the shoulder. But I'm still learning on this particular form. So just pass that around, and then you can decide whether. Using the form method or using the freehand method would be better for you. Again, the simpler the design that you're going to use, um, the better things will go for you. Um, what else? So when you take a butt plate this small, I'll just reiterate, and you go to inlet it, one that's made out of thin material instead of cast, you have to get the stock very close to where you want it. You cannot treat it as though it's stiff as this thing, and you can simply put it on there and wail on it with a wooden mallet with your inletting material, and it's not going to bend on you. It is going to bend on you. And you need to dome the whole stock underneath. You basically have to form the butt stock the way you want it, slide the butt plate on. When you do your transfer, use something like this. Lay it on top here, lay it on the back here. It's tough. So that you're not deforming everything every time. You have to go back and check your angle that you're not opening it up like this. Um, so those are the kind of basic approach as far as how I would do it. I'm going to clean up uh, the corners on that one where it's got the little ripples. I don't know if it's being passed around, but uh, it's a it's a start on a buckwood. The other thing, as I mentioned. You can stretch an existing butt plate with these methods. And as far as forms are concerned, the same things work for uh, entry thimbles. 
packages and uh, and other things like that. You can you can make sure yourself some forms out of wood uh, that will work just as well as uh, for small numbers of items as uh, as a metal form. Same thing with those cast. Now the, the chances are with cast, um, you run a risk of, of voids, right? right? And if there's a possibility for the cast butt plate, you're going to run into something like I did on this one. So this butt plate I stretched by a quarter inch, um, but the edge has got this crack in it, see? And that, it didn't show up anywhere else, so I have to feel it's like that was probably a casting flaw that just I brought out by beating the crap out of it. So um, that can happen. But again, I wanted this one to be a little bit longer than what it was for the particular build I had going. Um, yep. So you, yeah, you can stretch them in both directions. With a little flaw, you yeah. ever solder it back up? Or? Yeah, a little flaw like that. Um, if you have a friend, like uh, they, for example, somebody has a torch, uh, they're, they'll be able to braise this. Um, Rio Grande has a silver solder that goes about 1200 degrees that is, that is yellow in color and that will build something like this and be less noticeable if you solder it's going to stand out but that silver solder the real grand cost uh sells i mean they give you a little a little piece of wire that's not much thicker than my thing here about three feet long it'll cost you about fifteen dollars so. <laughs> Not a lot there. Yeah, not a lot of material. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem with trigger guards is most guards are going to be, are going to, certainly for a northwest gun, absolutely. So the same techniques where you make a simple guard for a northwest gun or some other uh, trade gun that basically has a piece of sheet metal that goes like this and goes against the bottom, That's, that'll work fine. Okay. In a case like that, I make a form. Uh, so I'll take a piece of wood that will have a loop in it, right? And I will I'll cut it out with, a, say, a, a jigsaw or something like that. And I'll use both sides of it. So I use the female side of it and the male side of it. I'll slide it in there after I rub it and then pound it on the other one in place and it'll really square things up and level them out. If you don't want it to just bring it in. So I, again, like to just present my technique for doing things. Um, first go with this, with this form. Uh, I got an angle on it. I got a corner I can, I can uh, fix up. And I made the I made the part against my shoulder a little too short. So next time I'll know where to keep my metal in the form and uh, where to get to go. But anybody anybody here who has their own experience and their own way of doing things would uh, like to share anything. I don't believe that any of us is the source of all knowledge. I believe that some techniques work better for one person than another. So, if anybody wants to hang around afterwards and give it a go, uh, with what I've got here, just choose what you want and give it a try. Or if anybody just wants to make one, uh, I'll be happy to walk through it with you. How are you going to roll that corner right here? Yeah. How are you going to roll that in? So, I'm going to have to use that with, um, I'm going to use my, my ball peen hammer. Actually, tell you the truth, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to reopen this a little bit, okay, at this corner. I'm going to open it up a little bit so that I get that fold out of there. All right, so I opened it up just a little bit here. I'm going to take a ball peen hammer in there and, and round that fold out, right? And then I'm going to put the, make sure I get this in a form more stoutly. And I'm going to, as I peen it, I'm going to focus on that corner, making sure that the ball peen hammer keeps that round instead of creased. Instead of that crease. Yeah. So that crease will come out, but it just, the best thing instead of trying to work it closed is to open it back up a little bit. And then you take care of the problem that you've got, and then you go back to uh, 
to the right angle that you want. But you'll anneal that really good yeah. again. Yep, I'll anneal it again. Yep. But again, one of the, the main values, although this corner didn't go perfect, is that this thing is really round and it's really not scarred. Yeah. As as opposed to if I took something like this and was pounding the heck out of it on an anvil or a ruffled rusty swage block or something like that, there'd be a lot of dimples and problems on the outside and spend a lot of time filing to clean it all up. Thank you, Rich. Yep, thank you. Yeah. Thank you.